Welcome back. In Hour 3, we have Tim Alexander, our historian, geopolitical analyst. Bottom of the hour, Chris Harris, and the evolving mega-catastrophe of Fukushima Daiichi. I'll be on second hour as a guest on Rents, which I'm on Thursday nights, except for the second Wednesday, second Thursday of the month will be on the third hour as a guest, just with updates on these kind of issues. Uh, Tim, there's lots of things going on, but the Middle Eastern war now, it looks like with the, you know, I had a comment yesterday when I had Bill Salas on the program, and he tried to say at first that it was obvious that the Syrian government had done this, and I said, it's absolutely not obvious. 99.99% 99.99% chance this was a so-called Syrian Free Army trained in Jordan with chemical weapons given by NATO and America and smuggled used against, through Turkey. <clears throat> smuggled through Turkey and used against Syrian citizens to justify an illegal war so that they can then do a NATO America British attack against the Syrian government, which is and, and Iran. Supported. Iran is the key. And, and Iran, uh, with Russia and China, basically, this is going to become not just a Middle Eastern war, but a global thermonuclear war almost instantly if they push this too damn far, which means we're also on the verge of a false peace treaty because just before they got to the precipice of the edge of the cliff, meaning the end of the world, they're going to pull back, and we will have a peace treaty shortly. And I believe it's going to happen during the second term of Obama, I think it's very highly likely that this will happen in the next couple of years. <clears throat> if it happens quickly, which John Kerry is trying to have it done before April of 2014 with uh, Erekat and Zippy Nivlivni from the Israelis, Erekat from the Palestinians, we're looking at uh, Bernanke now saying he's going to decrease pr- uh, quantitative easing. We have the federal government trying to block lawsuits for seizure of bonds. The Chinese are freaked out because they know the Treasury notes will become worthless if there's a bond market run. We have America and and the West and their so-called intelligence agencies pushing like crazy to blame something that doesn't even make sense, that the the Assad regime would attack and kill its own citizens in their bed, women and children, which doesn't make any sense whatsoever, but it does make sense for a losing side, the so-called Syrian Free Army, who wants tanks, heavy weapons, and aircraft, and a no-fly zone, which will precipitate, number one, the loss of our Navy, which will go to the bottom because we don't have asymmetric protection against Russian-based weapon systems like the Akan cruise missile and the hypersonic super-cavitation torpedo and the uh, the, uh, S-400 system. The Akamats, yeah. And the Akamats. And all these things, basically, bye-bye Navy. If you're perched in the Persian Gulf, you might as well say the last time you're seeing your relatives because you're going to die. If they start this war, your ship is going to the bottom. You're not going to have time well, to get a lifeboat. Well, yeah, you, you say that, and I unfortunately I agree with you, but I hope it's not true because... It is true. Uh, Here, here's yeah, the facts. Yeah, yeah. We, our military has already stated asymmetrically, and I read it this morning in the, in the Drudge, they've already stated that if we support the so-called Syrian Free Army, we're handing over to people that we cannot trust to even be uh, more reasonable than the Assad regime, who has the sense, remember now, Assad is an eye doctor who has the sense never to attack Israel with chemical or biological or nuclear weapons. But the Syrian Free Army, which are neither Syrian nor free, 90% are foreign terrorists, they will use these weapons, and Israel won't wait. Israel will just, on the tarmac, they'll nuke them. They will absolutely cannot tolerate a prolonged war. The Israelis will flatten them on the tar- tarmac. And so well, I can but, see... But the, the, the trouble that... Uh, when. Uh, I agree with that, but uh, I I think back to uh, a lunch I had with one of Israel's top generals uh, maybe two years before the first Gulf War, and um, I was telling him uh, some of the real dangers if um, uh, the Iraqis at that time, Saddam Hussein, really knew how to use his his force with uh, a few our explosive technology and a few other things, uh, the, that it could be a far greater danger than what they were looking at. And he says, well, your Air Force and our Air Force, we can, we can find them, we can find their launchers and take them out. And I said, well, I don't think so. And uh, my, my buddy that was with us, three of us were having lunch. He was uh, the chairman of a uh, aerospace design bureau, very high tech. And uh, that was his favorite restaurant. It was near the airport in Long Beach, and it was long and low. And I said, look, how many IRBMs, intermediate range ballistic missiles, and how many cruise missiles do you think we could park, we could hide in a place like we're eating? 
and he kind of looked around, and I said, you know, you can make the walls where they slide open or, or they fall down. You roll the, the you roll your uh, missiles or cruise missiles out, and you have pre-surveyed launch positions, You and you wreck them and fire them in, in a matter of minutes, literally a few minutes. And I said, uh, if you, you know, I said, uh, if you want to do something like that, you put a, uh, you put some lead sheeting in the roof so the most advanced radar penetrating satellites can't see through. And, right. and, he, and he kind of started looking around, he realized, well, maybe this crazy guy he's talking to actually knows what he's talking about. Right. Well, once, uh, two years later, when the, the war started and we had uh, literally a massive NATO air fleet flying over Iraq because what, uh, within two days we had knocked out all of his air force. Uh, and so we had free reign over Iraq. Only a few places was he able to fire some missiles, but we couldn't find him. And I think we took out a couple on the ground. We took out a, a milk delivery truck one time, a great big, you know, for, uh, uh, a truck that moved uh, kind of like a, a tanker truck, which we thought was uh, one of them. But we, he was hiding them in all kind of places, including under bridges. And uh, we couldn't take them out. Well, the Syrians know this, and the Syrians have a great many uh, intermediate-range ballistic missiles, guided, terminally guided, that are pretty precise, and they have a variety of advanced biological, advanced conventional, fuel air explosive, etc., warheads. And they're all aimed at Israel, uh, and some can be uh, targeted on uh, Turkey, uh, Saudi Arabia, as well as American uh, uh, bases in the Middle East. So Saudi and, Arabia is very close, and so is Turkey. They're both basically Turkey is really asking to get crushed, and so is Saudi. And the Iranians have missiles that can strike uh, Saudi. There's a quote in the Bible, an Old Testament quote, and I can't give the exact uh, scripture numbers, but it says that Elam, which is Western Iran, will will destroy the burden of the desert of the sea, which is Saudi Arabia. And, of course, when you look at the description it has in the Old Testament, it's a destruction by fire. Uh, Iran is going to destroy Saudi. And if you're in Riyadh, get out. Because if this war breaks out, the very first place, the very first missile that's going to land will be from Iran on Riyadh. Yeah, and it's a, a fairly compact target. She's got some pack three uh, air defense missiles and, and better. But uh, any air defense it's system... It's only a little over 800 miles from from uh, western Iran to uh, Riyadh. 800 yeah. miles, that's nothing. The Icelandic, uh, or actually in, in Russian it means the Alexander is named after uh, the three Alexander czars of Russia. The uh, Alexander missile system, which we know uh, Syria has in considerable number, uh, and they're fairly new from Russia, that thing is a hypersonic missile. Uh, depending on uh, which expert you want to talk to, it's six, and it may be as fast as Mach 8. You can't stop it. We don't have anything that can stop the thing. And uh, uh, so essentially, uh, if they want to launch something within several hundred miles of the target, they're going to hit that target. Right. And uh, uh, and the, the, it's, it's designed for high value targets, and um, it will deliver what other warhead you put on it. And that warhead might be radiological. That warhead might be uh, advanced conventional. It might be, uh, uh, you know, anything. And uh, so I guess uh, to summarize the news, uh, the news is not just dark. It's not just apocalyptic, it's literally a geopolitical black hole is moving over the geopolitical landscape of the world. Well, pray. We're heading toward the East War. Over. It might pass yeah. over, but it doesn't look good. It doesn't look good at all. Back in a moment. Yeah. Yeah, it's amazing. Welcome back, and uh, so Tim, let's let's run through some more of these news items. Yeah, and, we uh, have. Uh, and where, Dr. where is Bill. this going? Because I uh, I see a converging hellstorm happening. Uh, exactly. Just to summarize what I see is number one, 
we see them pushing like crazy with this latest attack of somewhere between 1,300 and 2,000 people killed. This, this is basically a false flag caused by us supplying chemical weapons and training to, in Jordan to the so-called Syrian Free Army which means NATO, America, the West, McCain, after he visited out of the Alzheimer unit, the uh, Syrian Free Army, they're guaranteed and absolutely determined. They don't care if Russia nukes American cities. They don't care if we have an EMP weapon that takes over our power grid or releases biological weapons on American soil. They have no control over the borders whatsoever. You know, you can't tell the difference between Pedro and some Middle Eastern terrorist is going to be up here enraged and, and, and going to take it back for Allah because he's got in the back of his refrigerator lyophilized deadly bioweapons from the biopreparate program from Syria and Iran exactly. because they now, nuked, they now nuked Damascus, killed all his relatives, or if he was a Christian, they know, for example, that the Christian church is being burnt to the ground by Obama and his yahoos. And he, he claims to be a Christian. No, we have a Muslim in the White House, but he's not even a good Muslim. He's not even a decent one, what we have is a maniac, Obama, plus we have NATO determined, even if it causes the death of 100 million Americans from a nuclear war, they don't care. In fact, they want We have what I call the perfect carnicopria from hell. Right, and, and it's, it's all converging. We've got an airborne plague of fruit. We, we got the MERS plague, we've got new viruses like H7N7, H7N9, which they're now saying the next last week they're going to weaponize in the lab. And they now know they that there's have. other viruses. And if you read the latest reports from Dr. Henry L. Nyman on H1N1 transferring genes to the H3N2V, which is a current flu, this current fall flu, by the way, is here two and a half months early, and it's got genes from the lethal H1N1 flu of 2009. So now we got. Uh, uh, while we were, uh, we should tell people while we were on break, we were talking about the H seven N seven H seven eight N nine viruses, and they discovered a new one, the H seven seven N seven virus. And uh, but you you uh, you made the perfect comment, and this is the comment that all analysts ask. Why now? Exactly. Why now? Why? Tell, tell us. You're a geopolitical analyst. Why well, well, now? Here's a are comment these, I made. Are repository in, in camels and, in, and bats? Why now, after all these centuries, do we have a break, outbreak of MERS? This and coincidental RV? to the, 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 yeah. the first uh, time period in human history we were able to to manipulate viruses, uh, genetic engineering, recombinant DNA, genetic engineering. Well, here here's uh, a comment I made on my blog today. Uh, or yesterday, based on the Qatari MERS uh, COV uh, case, uh, start a global bio nightmare and blame it on the Arabs slash Muslims and say it was a natural event that Ramadan caused to spread globally. Do this when a global war is gearing up so you can confuse the masses about where all the bio war deaths are originating from until you have everyone locked down and too damn scared to protest against their crazy governments for getting them in World War III and getting everyone killed. Right. Now, even if we don't have World War III, you have the, you have well, this, uh, even if you don't have that, you I'm have, you have levels, levels of likelihood. It's likely at about a 90% probability that at the very least we're going to have an airborne plague this fall or next spring. Exactly. And number two, it's very likely we're going to have a bond market blow now, especially since Bernanke said, and the stock market's below 1500 they're not going to put quantitative easing out there. And we're also going to allow them to seize the funds of private pension funds, which means the first group freaked out by this were the Chinese. So we're likely to have a bond market blow. Well, and, and you got to remember... You in your block, the petrodollar is under attack. Now, the reason is... The petrodollar is under attack, and most people don't realize 60% of the dollars in the world are U.S. But another 30% of the so-called dollars goes through these exchanges, which means effectively the Fed Reserve note, which is neither a U.S. dollar nor Federal Reserve, controls 90% of the money on Earth, is in denominated in U.S. dollars, right? right. That means only 10% of the world's money is in any other currency. So that when the charter runs out this year, and I know they're ready to do it, I know somebody sent me a report suggesting that maybe they gave a perpetuity for the for the uh, U.S. Federal Reserve. No, they didn't. No, they Fact have to. Is, they have to repass it. They have to repass it in the Congress by December 24th, which is Christmas Eve. I call it the Tim Burton nightmare before Christmas. And what they're going to replace it with is a biometric world currency, i.e., the mark of the beast. That's coming quickly because they need to have a catastrophe like... You know, That's like, why uh, all this has been set up. 
Right. That's so why all this the, has been set up. They want to blow the dollar. Listen, there's nothing that's going to have cause more of a cardiac risk. I'll give you an example. If you want to kill somebody quickly, a medical catastrophe, is it a bullet in the head or a pulmonary embolus? Believe it or not, you die faster from a pulmonary embolus. And the pulmonary embolus, in terms of the world economy, is closing off the Strait of Hormuz. If they start a war, all they need is one phone call to the insurance carrier to say, no way are we allowing you to put a tanker through the Strait, which is well, why even across. Well, uh, even to use your, the, your scenario, Dr. Bell, even if, if there's a peace treaty, but we can get to a point, and then this becomes a very, very dangerous game for somebody to play, but these right. guys that are running things today are, are, as far as a human perspective, are insane. Uh, well, they're they demonic. They wanna... they're not, they, there's, a, there's a point beyond insanity. It's called evil. We like Absolutely. to just call it insane because we think these people don't lack sense. No, they lack. A, they have a satanic sense of we want death, we want destruction, and we want their souls to go to the eternal place of separation from the Creator. That's the exactly. Satan's attention. And we have to understand it's not just insanity, it's malevolent, galactic, cosmic level evil. Yeah, they vibrate on a, a, a very low uh, satanic frequency. They're not uh, in tune with God. And many and many times when people like that, when they die, and if they have a near-death experience and come back, uh, it was a very negative one. But oh, yeah. they can't stand the presence of God. It's not that God says you are condemned. They condemn themselves because they can't stand well, God. Well, well, they can't stand heaven. So, Tim, where, where is this going? I really think we're... Okay, well, right, right now, the got, Indian Ruble... We have that also. We have the ISON comet coming in, which a comet literally... We had a CME just missed us a month ago that could have knocked out our power grid and our ground base. Well, yeah, uh, okay. Uh, okay, let's go. Let's... We, we, uh, we got all these things converging right now. The Carnicopria from hell. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The Indian Ruble and economy are in free fall, and, the, and right. India is trying to grab all the gold they can right now. Uh, uh, and, and they have done everything they can to stop this massive market. Remember, there's over a billion people in India. They have a, and you know, a lot of Americans think, oh, they're poor. No, they have a bigger middle class than France. Right. And, uh, you know, they have the, the nuclear weapons. They have aircraft carriers. They have, uh, they're building a, a, uh, a stealth aircraft with Russia. You know, don't underestimate uh, India. But their ruble now is in free fall. And well, they have done everything they can to stop people in India from converting the ruple into gold. And, and they have been buying gold fast. Most of the money, most of the gold that's available on the world is going to the Indian market. Uh, well, we ran out of time. There was a lot of, more I wanted to say. I'm but, going to uh, continue that when you come back. Um, I don't have an update report right now from Chris, although I do expect him to come on momentarily to give us an update. We'll be back in a minute. We need to continue this dialogue because people aren't trapped spiritually or physically like you talked in the first hour with Jerry Stivus and Rob Brady. Yeah. Yes, now all of a sudden they say they've got Gunderson a problem. Too. Our Ernie Gunderson of, uh, is also... Well, to summarize on some of the events that are coming, and I think the one that's going to trump all of them is going to be the uh, uh, subsidence of the structure sitting at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear waste depot. We, we call a triple reaction meltdown, but we also have reactor cooling pool 4, likely with subsidence of the ground to tilt over and fall in, and this giant corium uh, lava lamp is going to cause hydrovolcanic explosions. And by the way, the amount of cesium-134, it's estimated, if cooling pool goes down four, we're going to have about 114,000 times the amount of radioactive cesium as released in Hiroshima or Nagasaki. Uh, that means, basically, cesium is a analog of potassium and magnesium, but it, because it causes arrhythmias and it causes vascular damage, the rate of stroke in northern Japan since Fukushima Daiichi has gone up 3,500%. That's statistics. Okay? 3,500? 3,500 so, 3, percent. Wow. Which means 35 times. So what we're dealing with now, people aren't going to live long enough to get cancer. 
Uh, what the globalists want is a vast reduction in human population. They don't want people stupid enough to try to reproduce very wildly without submitting their gametes to a laboratory. I expect that, as the, that if you actually did a study of the number of women actually delivering normal children in northern Japan and the number that have birth defects or are forced to do, quote, genetic screening and abortion, uh, and already in social countries like in Canada, and by the way, Canada is an obscenity. Uh, Britain, uh, they, with their liver with their Liverpool protocol, their their basically attitude toward children with Down syndrome, like my daughter. The geneticists call me when I uh, realize that my daughter was going to have Down syndrome and harass me as early as 6:30 in the morning at 11 at night, until I eventually had to counter threaten them to say, "If you call me any more times, doctor," and he happened to be Jewish, and I said, "You need to get down on your knees." before the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, because I'm also a descendant from the Cohens, and pray to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, our creator, that my daughter survives, because she's going to have heart surgery, she's going to survive, and she's not going to be aborted. And if you call me one more time, you, doctor, will never call anyone again. Take that seriously. <laughs> and he and he realized, like, you're serious, aren't you? I said, do you want to find out the hard way? There's a nice side to Dr. Deagle, and there's a side you never want to see. And I'm going to tell you uh, out there, we need to have an we have a need to have an attitude as I call Joshua Christians, which are not going to take the giants lightly. We're going to take the giants by cutting their Achilles tendon and then chopping their heads off, the same way as these globalists, like the King, the Duke of Edinburgh, that wants to come back as a global uh, killing virus to kill the populations of the planet. The inaction over Fukushima Daiichi is a gen- genocidal act against the world. The allowing uh, International Court of Justice hasn't filed against the Japanese government for burning hundreds of millions of tons of mixing low and high radioactive nuclear waste and putting it up in the troposphere. That's an international crime, and nobody has sued them yet. The idea that they drilled the Makondo drill site and disrupted the loop current and the pacemaker for the jet stream, that's an international crime. The formation of laws like Obama did, the we call the... The, the genocidal GMO Protection Act of the Mount Satan Monsanto Corporation by Obama and his yahoos. This is another international crime, all of it designed to make human normal You've got to remember that impossible. Chief Justice Supreme Court used to be Masano's uh, chief uh, legal counsel. Mon- Monsanto, yeah. I call Mount yeah. Satan. Now, 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 listen, we want to hear from uh, from Chris because there's only three real sources that are putting information out against Fukushima. There's this program every Thursday, and we do other programs on Friday. There's Jeff Francis' program with uh, Michael Collins and uh, Uichi Shumatsu and other experts that he brings on, and there's Ernie Gunderson. That's it. The regular media are absent without leave, and they want to now say, oh, yeah, now there's a problem because they want you to believe the next stupid thing they're going to say when they have had no solutions, they don't ask even good questions, and they will never interview people like you, me, or uh, Ernie Gunderson on regular media. Nobody. They don't want, and none of the politicians, they're completely useful, useless, and I didn't even mean including Daryl Issa, the most wealthy congressperson who happens to be in a di- my district, probably within a mile of my home, wouldn't even sit down with me to talk about San Onofre, but I threatened him, I said, if you don't close that plant in San Onofre, I'm going to sue you personally. So guess what? Within a week, they they close her down. I said, you're going to get a radiation exposure, too. This plant is in danger of going hot and having nuclear uh, meltdown. And by the way, it's still in danger, even though they so-called shut it down, of, going, of having a meltdown and going nuclear. Explain that, Chris, because people need to understand every one of our American plants, plants in Switzerland, France, everywhere, is sitting on 60 to 70 years of nuclear waste, which is biohazard danger and also danger for terrorism. But many of these plants are still hot, and they can still go critical and explode, right? There's so many issues we could discuss, and we never have time to explore them all. So, I mean, I'd like to just just start by saying, listen, years ago when we had first talked about Fukushima, I felt that as it, I felt that it, it was my duty to come forth and say, "Warning! This is pretty serious, and it's going to get a lot worse." It's getting worse and by the day. Was, now it's ready to go was, kaboom. Now we're ready to see hazmat situations where if you don't duct tape your windows and have a HEPA filter, stay in your homes and take your Nutrimeds, including Nutritrala, Nutriodine, etc., you're going to get fried. 
And we're not saying this is going to be maybe, I don't know when it'll happen. It could be next weekend. It could be two months from now. It could be 10 years from now, but it's coming. And the fact that there's subsidence now, reacting cooling pool four, you can hear a crack, crack, crack sound if you had a microphone nearby. And that, that whole cooling pool, which is up at 100 feet, could just come crashing down, and all that corium is going to go into the ground. As soon as it hits that groundwater, it's going to generate tritium, which slows neutrons and increases criticality. We're going to get a lava lamp kind of nuclear effect, and we're going to have a hydrovolcanic explosion that directly connects the fault lines to Mount Fuji and other fault lines across Honshu, which they just had Miyagachi in Japan it was covered the whole city with a layer of radio of, of ash. And by the way, most people don't realize that most ash in most volcanoes is radioactive especially ones from up in Iceland, not only extremely high fluoride levels, but radioactive uh, radioactive uh, uranium, radon, and other radioactive. Yeah, it's a natural radiation, though. Natural radio- radiation. Now, what, what people don't really want to say, they, they, they want to attack the messenger because they say, no, you can't know all that science. You don't know that. I do, okay? And I have contact experts like Chris. This is a nuclear expert. That's his radio. That's his radio name. He's one of the top 40 nuclear safety experts on the planet. We have other scientists in the background here. We have other sources inside and outside the government, and they're completely freaked out. And there are solutions to this, but we don't hear anybody suggesting that they need a number one create a crystalline corium catcher, then dehydrate the area and make certain that they form a, 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 a if you want to call it a boronated crystalline structure sarcophagus and, an, and a corium catcher underneath it to make sure the seawater never gets at this reactor site again. That's going to cost, I'm estimating, somewhere between a quarter and, a, and $500 billion to do it over the next 20 years. Nothing is being done by TEPCO, by the International Atomic Energy Commission, by the American government, by NATO, by anybody. And what's happening, we're sitting on a catastrophe where the amount of radioactive isotopes getting into the ocean is not 200, not 300, not 500 tons per day, but it could be as much as 10 times that are 5,000 tons a day. That's what's going on. And the fish are dying. We now know that the bluefin tuna, even six months within Fukushima Daiichi off of the San Diego coast, were 100% 100% had radioisotopes in them. We now know that the, the, the salmon population are dying at sea. They're not coming back. The salmon that go way out into the oceans, they're going into the giant plumes of radiation in these currents underwater. They're not coming back. They're dying at sea. We're, we're, we're literally looking at an extinction-level event, and everybody's pretending that nothing's happening. And yeah, the Pacific the herring up in Canada, uh, they, they tested 100 of them, right, guys? And they, they found in 100, all 100, that there was bleeding from their eyeballs, from their faces, the fins, the tails, uh, in every Pacific herring that they examined. And this is up in Canada because of the currents that flow that, that hit the Canadian I, Pacific. No, I, tell people, I, I, don't, I don't say don't eat the fish, but I say if you don't have an Inspector Plus with an EXP uh, arm on it, if the fish click, click, clicks, back away from the fish counter because you realize <laughs> um, unless you're testing it, do not eat anything from the Turn Pacific around and Ocean. go to the parking lot and leave. Uh, yeah, yeah. Back up and walk away and don't breathe even near the fish counter. Uh, well, I want to thank you for bringing that up. That's exactly, I was going to discuss that. Yeah, yeah, we need to get into this. Chris, I want you to tell us just how bad it is and how quickly it can become catastrophic here because we've been frustrated with the media uh, for two and a half years. Now they're trying to pretend that now they think there's just an issue. With uh, Tim Alexander and Chris Harris. Chris, uh, I want you to make a comment first, and you had made a very good analysis, uh, Tim, that uh, people need to understand this is not just stupidity. This is evil. This is a population reduction policy, Agenda 21. We had uh, Dr. Mike Kaufman on last uh, just a couple of days ago talking specifically about this. Uh, you know, people want to say, oh, that's your, just your opinion. No, it's not in my opinion. It's published. When you see this number of agencies, and we're not even talking about the Keystone Cops, you know, the silent movies before the talkies. What we're talking about is a level of evil, not incompetence, that is monumental. And we have lying, and the thing is there's no investment whatsoever. Do you know what they do on the weekends when uh, they, uh, with all this radiation being released and subsidence occurring and the groundwater being so toxic now and radioactive they can't even go on the site? Do you know what they do on the weekend? They go home. They do nothing. There's well, nothing yeah, but they happening they go in the there. dark when they go home. 
Yeah, they go in the dark. And what happens? What, what I see happening here is a global catastrophe. And by the way, when people say, oh, "Well, I'll just move to the southern hemisphere," or "Don't worry, I'll move to the east coast," guess what? Your level of radiation in Belarus or over the transpolar area, because it can go to Siberia, Russia, and China, your level of radiation anywhere on the planet, including when I looked at the transoceanic currents, the primary current carrying radiation from Japan is not heading directly east in the Kuroshi current. Guess what? It's going south toward Ecuador and the western uh, uh, coast of, uh, of South America. And there's also giant currents carrying it directly toward New Zealand and Australia. So if you think you're going to just take off to the southern hemisphere and you're going to be cool, you're crazy. You have to understand every single ocean in the world is now getting fed the stream of radiation coming from Fukushima Daiichi. It takes 26 months for the transoceanic, if you want to call it, conveyor belt to carry these currents around the world. And now every ocean on the planet is being poisoned at an enormous rate. Enormous rate. And people don't understand when we have, you know, and I looked at today, today today's paper, and I said, where do you think this picture is taken of? And I showed my wife, Michelle, and she said, I don't know. I said, you see those dead seals? You see those, the, the, the seaweed where they, they showed the radiation detector? I said, that's not on a block. That's on a seacoast that's so radioactive, the seals are washing up radioactive and dead. And she said, where is it? I said, that's at San Onofre. That's at Pendleton Marine Corps Base, which is like five miles away. <laughs> I was going to say, isn't that where you live? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, no, no. People need to understand the seaweed of the western United States, uh, you know, on the coast. And that means, and then we had on top of that the idiocy of these Navy wanting to put sonar out so loud they caused the, the whales to go deaf. They can't find their mates or food. And we wonder why seal pups are showing up all over the place and their mummy's dead. So we wonder why we have all these seal pups stranded out there. It's because. The sea life are dying like flies because they're at the high end of the food chain, and the food in the ocean now is so radioactive that they're dying. Now, what are people going to do? Are they going to wait until people's skin starts to slide off or they go blind? Are they going to wait until people bleed from the nose and eyes? Are they going to wait and say, oh, gee, we should have listened to Deagle and to Chris Harris and to Tim Alexander and Garney Gunderson and Jeff Rents and all those experts like Tim Collins uh, and, and Yoshichi Shimatsu who travels back and forth right from the site there to, uh, to Thailand, etc., trying to detox himself. He goes back into the um, open maw of this giant what I call Fukushima Zilla monster. Damn it. I am so angry that the regular media will not interview us. I'm so angry that the people still want to attack us and don't get themselves prepared. They're not even prepared to turn their house into a hazmat facility. Chris, your comments. Yeah. Well, okay, let me just say, the quality of information that we've been putting out, that's why I just want to say to your listeners, this is high-quality information, and I can tell you why. Recently, CNN and all the major media, I'm talking about in the last week or so, all of a sudden seems to have been... They've a gag order was lifted or something. They're, they're now allowed to talk about Fukushima because even one CNN... We're embarrassing one them into CNN, doing it. We're embarrassing well, them to I, open I, their I, maw and say, oh my gosh, look how stupid we look with Deagle in his home studio and Chris Harris calling in and Tim Alexander in his home studio can give better news coverage than these yahoos sitting in multi-million dollar studios across America with 3D cameras and info babes well, well, and they I, don't do I, a I, damn I, thing. It's ridiculous. I almost lost my lunch when I read this one. one uh, a scientist at CNN says that Fukushima is not contained. Not contained. It's not even shut down. I mean, let's just face it. Well, that's an obscenity to say the word contained. Now, How about we have, yeah. it's almost like an open, fungating, bleeding, pus-filled mass that's spreading, you know, death viruses and, and pathogens and radiation, and they think it's not contained? Excuse me, uh, I mean, if you're an alien looking from a few light years away, you'd say, I think the Earth is dying. Yeah. I mean, for, I mean, years ago, how many, how many did we try to relay in, in the terms that, you know, we could all, we try to teach. I mean, we're all teachers. And so we said that this was a perfect waste generation facility with no off switch. People right. may have laughed, and they're not, they're not laughing now. Uh, we no. said that there is the, 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 the lava lamp type sporadic uh, fission process that right and, and also remember now happened. we mentioned how um, the, the the production of tritium and the the, the, the trade tritium enemy tritium. is water the second enemy is neutrons and if you have water that with uh, the 
uh, zirconium clad increase, tritium, tritium slows neutrons, and all of a sudden you get criticality, and also when you break down the, the, the rubberized, boronated rubber on these fuel oil assemblies, they're all twisted, and they cannot be pulled out. They can't be cut out. In fact, if you mess with them and hammer at them, they can actually go critical and explode, or you have a pyrophoric fire. Did, did, did people understand what pyrophoric fire means? It turns a large percentage of the radioisotope materials into a nanoparticle radioactive nuclear explosive cloud. That's not good. Right. And, and we warned that the tanks and the, and the uh, hastily constructed systems that they're trying to mimic the original systems with are, are basically... Uh, Makeshift systems and they're not inadequate. They don't. They won't last. I mean, even if they were good for two or three years, is that any good? When you got stuff, you got to store for centuries. Come on. So now you store. So basically, you sweep. You're you're flushing out all of the all the radionuclides from inside the core, and you're storing it in all these tanks now. So what have you done? You've made it. You made hundreds of little Fukushima's all bleeding now. So and and that's really that's really what I was trying to convey. That this is not done. This is not over. This is, by any stretch of the imagination, this is the... Uh, well, we had, we had an earthquake here in California just last night. And we shook, it shook our house, right, this morning. Yeah. We had an earthquake in Mexico City at 6.2. Since Fukushima Daiichi, there's been a 500% increase in 5-plus earthquake levels in the area of northern Japan. 500%. So this wasn't a directed energy weapon. It might have been triggered off by yeah. one because our, you know other people like Arnie Gunderson and other experts have told me including Professor McCann, he thinks it was artificially triggered. I think that there's other reasons for it, especially the approach of the, of the red dwarf star that's well past Jupiter, which increases Absolutely. nuclear activity and volcanism. Yep. But what's really going on here is that no matter what the source is, volcanism all over the planet's increasing, and we don't have them deconditioning and, and removing the nuclear material from the, from all the plants along the Madrid Fault Zone, Diablo Canyon, which is a conversion of three fault lines, the Guys, three weeks ago, the, we we had a coronal mass ejection that had it been turned slightly different, we would have had a Carrington event. Had we had a Carrington event three weeks ago, we would be within about a week or two of Fukushima here, Fukushima there, Fukushima everywhere. Right, but listen to this. I got stats from military experts who gave me the actual document back in from Canada, the America, and Australia. That if this, the power goes out. We're not talking about nuclear blackouts. We're not talking about airborne plagues. We're not talking about war or anything else. Just the power going out. Ninety, nine zero percent. This is their estimate from three different governments of the population will be dead. When you throw into the mix MERS, H seven N nine, radiation clouds from Fukushima, bond market blowout, regional nuclear war in the Middle East, uh, this is not a good survivable event. We're talking about a convergence of extinction level events in the near future. Yeah, and yeah. just two days ago, I just uh, heard a, a woman who was an engineer at the Department of Energy, and uh, I have to send you the link to, to her uh, interview on another radio show, but she was talking about the things that we were talking about, about coronal mass ejections and uh, solar magnetic disturbances, and she said the magic words. I knew she was right when she said it can take out the SCADA system. I know you and I have discussed the... Uh, well, not only that, it can cause a critical reaction to the plant. Just a, a very large pulse of magnetic radiation and neutrons uh, and a plasma flux from the sun can cause a nuclear reactor to blow up without it anything else. It can not only blow the power lines, it can actually, that's why they have to step down the power generation for yep. nuclear reactors. If they don't step it back and cool off the reactor core, it can blow up. Good time to get right with God, folks. Yeah, and, and we're not hearing any of this out there, by the way. The solution is a boronated sarcophagus of dehydrated of water. They don't make want it. the solution. They want us to die. It's a population reduction. Right. We're literally walking going. face first into the end times. And out there, the fools that don't believe it think that this isn't happening. By the way, I'm working hard to get Jonathan Kahn on. Uh, the uh, I consider the witness of Judah, who has given the harbinger in the last year or so, has given some final warnings to Judah, which is the state of Israel, and to America. 